Hey everyone, it's Jackov, and as I've been saying in the past few videos, it's time for me to broaden my video topics. So instead of covering Total War Rise of Mordor for Total War Attila like I normally do, instead I'm going to be covering The Last Alliance Total War. This is a mod for Total War Shogun 2, which is set in the Second Age of Middle-earth, compared to Rise of Mordor, which is set in the Late Third Age. So kind of imagine it as a spiritual prequel to Rise of Mordor in terms of setting. Currently, the mod is still very much in development, still being, I believe, in the version 0.2.4 Alpha, although I may be mistaken. Well, that may be somewhat early in the mod's development, there's still a fair bit of content to see in the mod, as it currently is with several factions and a small campaign being ready to play. For those of you interested in the mod, I'm going to leave it linked in the description, and I do encourage you to play it for sure. Today, however, I'm going to be doing a faction breakdown, going over a faction's history within both the books and films of Tolkien's universe, before looking at the civilizations that inspired them in real life. After that, I'm going to be looking at the faction's units and breaking them down, covering their battlefield roles as well as looking at their equipment and seeing how historically authentic it is. Now that you know what mod we're looking at, and what the video itself is going to cover, let's start by going over the general overview of today's faction, the Kingdom of Linden. If that name sounds familiar, it's because Linden is a faction in Rise of Mordor, which I've covered in a video looking at that mod's version of the faction. Essentially, Linden is the greatest elven kingdom of the Second Age of Middle-earth, ruled by the High Elven King Gilgalad and a defiant enemy and target of the Second Dark Lord Sauron. Waging many wars against Sauron, Linden was staunch allies with the men of Numenor and its successor kingdoms of Arnor and Gondor after their great maritime nation sunk under the waves due to Sauron's manipulations. Fighting alongside the blood of Numenor in the War of the Last Alliance, Linden would be the leading elven kingdom in the war, with much of its strength bled by the cataclysmic conflict to defeat Sauron. By the end of the war, Sauron lay defeated, however the cost was great for Linden, which lost its High King Gilgalad who died personally fighting and defeating Sauron in the books, as well as countless elven warriors. With so much of its population dead, Linden would fade away during the Third Age, becoming a backwater through which elves travelled to leave Middle-earth rather than the stronghold of the elves it once was. In the Peter Jackson films, Linden is only really seen at the beginning of the Fellowship of the Ring, where its golden armoured elves are shown fighting against Sauron's hordes, at the end of Return of the King when Frodo and Bilbo depart from the Grey Havens to travel to the Undying Lands. In terms of historical cultures that inspired Linden, in my last video on Linden, I said the one that came closest to my opinion was Great Britain, and I stand by it. Among the elven kingdoms of the Second Age, Linden was the foremost one, similar to the British Empire being the most foremost empire among European empires in the modern era, with Linden much like Britain losing much of its power and position on the world stage after fighting against a powerful enemy to the east invading Linden's allies, with Linden's fall from power allowing other kingdoms to become the leading powers of Middle-earth, much like Great Britain being superseded by the Soviet Union and the United States of America at the end of World War II. With the history and inspiration for Linden out of the way, let's look at its units. One thing to note is that the Linden roster in this mod is very fleshed out compared to the Rise of Mordor Linden roster, which is only in the early stages of development. Unlike Rise of Mordor, in which generals can sometimes be more elite units that can be used multiple times in one army, the generals in this mod are unique, with each faction I believe only having two generals, at the very minimum. The first general for the Kingdom of Linden is the Noldor Guard. Each of these elves are heavily armoured, covered in plate and mail from head to toe. Protecting their heads, they have a helmet which is very much inspired by ancient Greek Corinthian helmets or medieval barbutes, engraved with silver markings and topped with a blade-shaped crest much like a hoplite's horsehair crest. Highly decorated and chased helmets are known from history, and while I may have complained about the blade-shaped crest in my Rise of Mordor video on Linden, I argument the only potential use you could get from them is headbutting enemies. Apparently, a great elven warrior once killed a Balrog by headbutting it with a bladed helmet, so it kind of makes sense that the elves would pay homage to such a figure by including blades on their helmets. For the rest of their armour, they wear a male hauberk extending to the knees, with the riders split for some reason which doesn't make sense given these elves are infantry and not mounted. Over the top of this mail is a set of folds protecting the upper legs, while their torsos are covered in a highly engraved plate cuirass, with a blue cape pinned over the shoulders of the cuirass. Their upper arms are protected by similarly decorated spoulders, while their forearms are covered in overlaid plate van braces, their hands sheathed in mail gloves, and their shins protected by plate greaves. Because this unit is obviously an archer unit, they don't have shields and instead build longbows as their main weapons, with bastard swords that wouldn't look out of place in the 15th century as their melee weapons, with quivers for their arrows being either on their hip or on their back. Moving to their unit officer, 
He looks much the same as his men, except he wears a white cape to differentiate him from his troops, and a helmet that looks more like a cross between a bassinet and a Corinthian helmet, having a raised rear with the front section resembling hoplite helmets, the front section being enameled with blue markings, and the rear section having wings enameled onto it, tipped with a blue horsehair plume. Looking at the unit's role, they're a cheaper option for general, being very well armoured archers that can also fight well in melee when required. While well, the armour does give them a fair bit of protection against enemy ranged units, a lack of shield still makes them vulnerable, and against shock infantry or cavalry, they'll find themselves at a major disadvantage. A very cool unit to be sure, but not my favourite general option for the faction. For the next general option, we have the High King Guard, which is my favourite option for the faction. This unit of elite spearmen are very well armoured, sharing the same armour as the Noldor Guard. Because of that, we'll skip their armour and move on to their equipment. Instead of bows, these elves have shields in addition to their weapons. Their shields being the classic kite shield inspired elven shields often seen in Lord of the Ring mods, but also most prominently in the Peter Jackson films, with cutouts on the side. The shields as I said bear a resemblance to kite shields with a bit of a Celtic influence, being somewhat reminiscent of Bronze Age shields used by Celtic tribes. The shields are made completely of metal and highly ornate which while the ornate part is historically accurate if somewhat foolish, having such large metal shields made completely of metal is not historical, as the weight of such shields as well as difficulties in making sheets of metal large enough at that point in human history made such shields too prohibitive to build. Combined with the engravings are a central boss made of blue enamel decorated with stars, enameling being a known technique from history, although whether or not it was used for shields is something I'm not too sure about. One thing to note is by the point in history soldiers became this heavily armoured, shields were discarded due to the armour being enough to protect troops, so these shields are somewhat superfluous, although troops did continue to use shields at the end of the Middle Ages. For weapons, each elf has a spear reminiscent of a glaive of the Japanese Naginata, essentially a katana on a spear shaft and an arming sword at their side. The blades atop the spear shaft allowing for the weapons to be used to slash enemies as well as stab them. Such pole arms are a very common weapon to be wielded by elves, with the glaive, Iglos, being the personal weapon of the High King of Linden. Gilgalad, so it makes sense that the Royal Guard would emulate the King, having a variety of blade shapes at the end of their shafts, some being more straightforward while others are more ornate, some having metal banding extending onto the shaft for added strength and stability in battle. The unit officer, who I'm assuming is meant to be Gilgalad, has a helmet with an enameled brow, while his body armour is much the same as his troops, only having gilded portions in addition to his engravings, his feet also being covered by sabatons rather than leather boots. The weapon used by the officer is similar to his men's, only having a band around the centre of the shaft making it stronger than those used by his troops, while his shield is less ornate than his men, and more resembles a kite shield, not having a large cutout in it, nor having a large raised boss. As a general unit, I consider these guys the better option when playing as Linden, as while they can't deal out range damage like the Noldor Guard, they can absorb far more damage than that unit due to their shields as well as use their spears defensively, preventing them from being obliterated by cavalry. With the generals discussed, Let's move on to the first of the faction's regular units, starting with the Philathrum Light Spearmen. As is clearly obvious, these men are far more lightly equipped than the generals, which makes sense, given they're the least of the faction's infantry. Overall, their armour very much reminds me of Greek troops from antiquity, their helmets in particular reminding me of those used by the companion cavalry of Alexander the Great, with a raised rounded portion to protect the skull and deflect blows, or their cheek guards give additional protection and leave almost perfect visibility for the warriors. Protecting their bodies, they have a range of blue and turquoise tunics chinked at the waist, with belts, the blue being a nod to their heritage as seafarers, the Philathrum hailing mostly from the ports of the elves, making these guys closer to port guards or marines and frontline infantry, the lesser armour making sense in that context given fighting at sea covered in armour is generally a guaranteed way of drowning. Over the top of the tunics they wear what I can only describe as a short scale cuirass which only covers the upper torso, the stomach being left unprotected and the shoulders being protected by plate bands which make up the top half of the cuirass, their forearms being covered by plate van braces and their legs by plate greaves, all decorated with engraved vines of course. For weapons each man has a spear slash glaive with a large round metal shield serving to protect them. The shields remind me less of bucklers and more of the round shields used by the Spanish Verdoleros of the early 16th century, the shields themselves being known as Verdellos, such warriors being among my favourite in history, the elven shields being highly engraved like the rest of their armour, something that didn't happen in real life for lower ranking soldiers. In addition to their spears, each elf also carries a single-handed axe 
with a long shaft, such weapons being used historically by seafaring troops such as the Achaemenid Persian Marines, these axes having a cutout in the middle which were sometimes seen on axes, the weapons also being used as ammunition against enemies, being thrown at them. The unit officer looked significantly more armoured than his troops, having a more protective helmet which would look out of place being used by a Greek hoplite, the rest of his body being protected by a scale shirt with a rider split, over the top of which is a plate cuirass with a breastplate in the fashion of overlaid robes, with attached folds to protect the flanks of the legs, pauldrons and van braces providing arm protection, with the greaves protecting the shins. The thing to note about all of this armour is that, of course, it's turquoise, which is an interesting colour choice. While armour this brightly coloured may seem ahistorical, warriors in real life practically peacocked when it came to their equipment, so such colours for armour is actually very historic, even if it does look somewhat odd. Finally, the officer has the same shield and spear as his men. As a unit, these guys are pretty nice in the early game, being a useful component of a Linden army, holding the line while archers thin out enemy ranks, although replacing them is a good idea as they do get surpassed by the competition, even if their ranged abilities make for a bit of a nasty surprise. Next in the faction roster are the Noldor Light Spearmen, more heavily armoured counterparts to the Falathrum Light Spearmen. For helmets, these warriors have the standard Corinthian inspired elven helmets, while their body armour is a sleeveless mail shirt over which they wear a banded breastplate of plate, again only covering the upper half of the torso which is odd given that in history when such segmented armour was used, all of the armour would be quite heavy as opposed to what we see here. Finally, the arms and legs have van braces and greaves for protection. For weapons, the unit uses the standard Naginata, Spear, Glaive assortment, or their shields are the standard Elven Shield, just less ornate than the General's versions, still being made completely of metal, while each warrior has an arming sword at their side, the weapon looking like a 15th century blade. While the sword may seem odd given the troops already have spears, near the end of the Middle Ages troops would often use swords as backup, given that they were more useful in certain situations, such as in storming enemy fortifications, where larger weapons like spears were too unwieldy, Alexander's troops in antiquity doing the same thing, swapping out their pikes for short swords. The unit officer isn't much to see, the only difference between him and his men being his blue enameled gorget. As a unit, these guys will be the core of your army for a while, being fairly tough units due to their elven heritage, more than easily holding the line against enemies, often with the support of the Falathrum Light Spearmen. Definitely a crucial unit for a Linden player. Moving on, we come to the Falathrum Spearmen. These spearmen lack the skirmish abilities of their light counterparts, however they're more heavily armoured. Having highly decorated Corinthian style helmets for head protection, the rest of their body is covered in a scale hauberk, over which they have plate protecting the entire torso with folds over the scale for more protection. Their upper arms have spoulders used in tandem with their van braces, while their legs have the same standard greaves. Their weapons are the standard glaive and axe, while for a shield they use the same round one as their light counterparts. Their turquoise officer is equipped identically to the last Falathrum officer, so we'll skip him and move on to the unit role. As spearmen, these guys do all that's required of them, holding the line against enemies while also being capable of decimating cavalry, their armour and shields making them very resistant to enemy range units, a clear step up from the lighter units in the London roster. Finally we come to what was once my favourite unit in the mod, the Noldor Spearmen. As you can tell, these warriors and most of the units we've looked at have had a silver colour palette. Beforehand however, it was gold with these guys being the elven warriors you see fight in the opening of Fellowship of the Ring in their iconic golden armour. However, a couple updates ago, their colours were changed, something I'm not a personal fan of. This isn't a critique of the mod creator who I think is amazing, it's just my personal taste, but the way I'm holding out for a change back to gold, or if Imladris is added, hoping that they're now gold. Looking at their equipment, they're dressed out essentially identically to the High King Guard, except for a lack of blue gorgets. Apart from that, the rest of their equipment is the same, including spears and shields. The shields are only really lacking enamel. The unit officer is kitted out the same as the High King Guard regular troops, so we won't repeat what we've said before. As a unit, these guys are the core of your army for pretty much all the game, superseding lesser infantry by a mile and being capable of grinding away enemy forces into dusk while taking little damage in the exchange, truly being the shining example of how elven armies operate. Moving on to the last spear units, we come to the Falathrum Mithlon Guards, who are the elite sentinels of the Grey Havens from where elves depart to go to the Undying Lands. These troops and their officers are identical to the Noldor Guards, except turquoise, so I'm going to skip their appearance and go straight into their role. These warriors are even more devastating than the Noldor Spearmen, although because they're so elite, they're extremely limited and extremely expensive to field, something that they make up for with their quality. 
a cool unit that can turn the tide of battle, although if the other units in the Linden roster are used properly, they should rarely be needed. Moving on from their spears, let's look at the Linden Axemen beginning with the Cinder Light Axemen. Helmet wise, these troops look to be equipped with what seems to be a fusion between a nasal helmet and a Corinthian helmet, having the same facial protection but with a raised skull cap portion. For body armor, they have the same short cuirass as the Philathrum Light Spearmen, but over a scale shirt making for somewhat more defended infantry, with van braces finishing off their appearance, lacking greaves. For a weapon, each elf user can only be called a single-handed axe with a long shaft, while their shield is a large metal buckler with blue enameling. The unit officer wears a Corinthian-inspired helmet without a blade crest, while his upper torso is protected by a breastplate and a gorget, under which he wears a scale hauberk that extends to the knees, with the rider split for some reason. Finally, the officer has spoulders, greaves, and van braces to finish off his accoutrement, having the same shield and axes as men. As axemen, these guys carve through enemies quicker than their spear equivalent, though in exchange they're more vulnerable to cavalry and enemy infantry in prolonged exchanges. A good unit to give your army some offensive capabilities, but it's not a wise idea to build an army with axemen at your core. Moving on to the Sindar axemen, these warriors are far more heavily armoured, having the standard Corinthian helmet with a scale hauberk, over which is a tabard as a unit standard. In addition to these scale hauberks, every warrior has van braces, spoulders, and greaves, with axes as weapons and shields to defend themselves. The shields are interesting as because they're so large and made out of metal, they're ahistorical, although the smaller round shields seen used by the other units are far more historically accurate. These massive round shields being closer to the Viking shields in size, Viking shields being known for being made almost solely out of wood rather than metal, although the blue enameling is quite nice. The unit officer is identical to the last one, so we'll skip him and move on to the unit role. In battle, these guys are quite crucial to victory, being a key part of any Linden army, being tough enough to absorb enemy ranged units, although enemy cavalry is still a threat to be wary of. The unit now capable of carving through a wider range of enemies. Overall, a great unit as far as I'm concerned. Moving on to the final axe unit for Linden, we have the Sindar Heavy Axemen. Every man in this unit is as heavily armoured as a Sindar Axeman officer, the only difference between them and the officer being their officer's gorget. It's their weapons, however, that set this unit apart, as every warrior discards shields in place of a two-handed axe, many of them looking remarkably like the Dane axes used by the Vikings and the Saxons, although some of the elves have far more brutal axes looking more like a heavy blade at the tip of a shaft, somewhat looking like an incredibly thick axe-inspired bayonet. On the battlefield, these axemen are obviously shock troops hacking their way through enemy formations. While these troops kill enemies like no others, their weakness is that they're forced to rely on their armor to protect them, meaning that they're more vulnerable to combat as well as cavalry and ranged units, due to not having shields. Still a very useful unit, but one which would be used in moderation to punch holes in enemy lines. Leaving behind the axe units of the Kingdom of Linden, we come to its soul sword and shield unit, or in this case hammer and shield unit, the blacksmiths of Aurelian. Armor-wise, these troops are equipped identically to the Noldoran troops, except they have black gorgets with a symbol I'm unaware of engraved onto it, also using the same shields. It's their weapons where these guys stand apart from the crowd, each elf wielding a hammer with a nasty back spike on a metal shaft. Unlike most fantasy hammers, these look very authentic, such hammers being used by countless warriors in the Middle Ages, as such weapons were highly effective at bypassing the ever-increasing armor seeing service. For this unit, because of the most famed blacksmiths in the second age of Middle Earth, it makes sense for them to use hammers rather than other weapons, showing that they're equally skilled at destruction as well as creation. As I said before, their officer is identical to the unit, only really having a more ornate shield, so we'll jump to the unit role. In battle, these guys make for armor killers, capable of clearing out well-armored enemies. However, because they're so elite, they won't be the core of your army, nor should they be, given that while they're well armoured enough to withstand enemy volleys, cavalry can still cause them severe damage. A very unique unit are one that I rock with, but not one that I consider an automatic must-have when playing as Linden. With the blacksmiths of a region looked at, we've covered all of the melee infantry of Linden, so we'll move on to their ranged units, starting with the Kendi household. These are the lightest archers that the faction can field, and it's interesting to note the unit includes elven women, which makes sense given that the unit's closer to a last ditch gathering of civilians, rather than soldiers, which is reflected in their armour or lack thereof, having no armour except for their robes, which if silk could provide some actual protection. For weapons, each elf uses a longbow with an arming sword at the hip. As far as I can tell, the unit has no officer, so we'll get onto its role. These elves are the lightest troops Linden can field, and as such should only be used in the early game before being phased out by better troops, given these guys can suffer in arrow exchanges due to the lack of armour, while in melee or against cavalry, they're doomed. 
They're useful for the vein support they provide, but a wise general will know when to stop using them and when to move on to better options. One of these options are the incredibly stealthy Lycandy archers. Armor-wise, this unit, which also seems to lack an officer, is just as poorly armored as the Kendi household. However, these troops are protected by their green clothes and cloaks, which give them incredible stealth. What this means is that these troops can ambush enemies with ease and keep shooting without being detected by enemies, something that's quite valuable in battle, using their longbows with their arming swords remaining unsheathed until needed. As a unit, these guys are very much better than the Kendi household. However, they're just as vulnerable in melee and to enemy cavalry, although their stealth helps mitigate those threats, as well as enemy infantry catching them out in the open. A great unit, but one which will be used to bolster your ranged forces rather than be their core. Moving on, we come to the first heavy archers the faction can field, the Philathrum archers. Equipped identically to the Philathrum spearmen, but the unit as a whole and their turquoise officer. The unit uses recurve bows as their main weapon, an axe serving as their melee weapon while their round shields are slung over their back providing them with some protection. Recurve bows were widely used throughout history so seeing them here is cool, especially given that the Philathrum often fired at sea, where a more compact bow would be more useful. The recurve bow serving the role perfectly. In battle, these guys make good line archers, capable of absorbing enemy fire and also being present to melee where needed, matching gravel to an extent and being able to flank enemies fairly well. A pretty good unit that definitely deserves its place in the spotlight. After the Falathrum archers come the Linden Sentinels, which are essentially the buffed versions of the Lake Kendi archers. The Sentinels wear the Corinthian helmets in conjunction with bronze scale halberds and bronze fan braces and greaves, making them fairly well armoured stealth unit that has all the abilities of the Lakendi archers but none of their drawbacks, using their longbows to rain death on the enemy before drawing swords and meeting them in battle. Another unit which lacks an officer, these guys should be a go-to in high tier army builds and looking for an ambush force who can serve as both line archers and supporting infantry. Coming to the last archer unit, the Noldor archers are the ranged equivalent of the Noldor spearmen, discarding a shield and using a longbow, even having the same identical officer. These guys are the toughest archers that Linden can field and are capable of fighting in melee as well as absorbing enemy fire, although they're not as tough or durable as actual infantry, still being weak to heavy cavalry. I recommend using these guys as your line archers using their superior skills to defeat enemies, while Linden Sentinels provide stealth support, these guys taking the enemy's attention while your hidden troops thin out their numbers. Having looked at the last of Linden's archers, we come to their cavalry forces which are extremely limited. Starting off with the Noldor Light Horse Archers, these troops ride completely unarmored horses and use longbows and arming swords for weapons, having the standard linden helmet with blade crest and short breastplate, as well as scalloped van braces, lacking all other armor, their officer only being distinct due to his gorget. In terms of role on the battlefield, these guys can be used to harass slow moving enemy infantry and debate out enemy horsemen, although because linden's strength isn't in cavalry, they'll never be the core of an army and at most will be a supporting part. Making up the second half of Linden's cavalry are the Noldor Lancers. Noldor spearmen mounted on unarmored horses with the exact same officer as the Noldor spearmen. As cavalry, these guys can be used to parry enemy cavalry and to prevent them from using their superior mobility to outflank Linden's armies. Although when opportunities present themselves, they can tear enemy infantry apart and archers flee in terror when confronted with them. Unfortunately, they don't quite slack up compared to some other heavy cavalry, but then again, they're not meant to. Looking at the Linden faction overall, they're very much a civilization whose strength is in its spearmen and archers, having relatively low mobility compared to some other factions, always prioritizing quality, even for its lesser troops. As a faction, I love Linden, and if they were ever to regain their golden armor, I'd be over the moon. Definitely a faction that I think is one of the best in the game, and their play style is one that very much appeals to me personally. If you've liked this video, please make sure to like and subscribe. For such a small channel, it'll truly be appreciated. If you've enjoyed what you've seen, I want to let you know that I'm definitely planning on making more of these videos on this mod in the future. However, I'll be dividing my time between making these videos and others for other mods. This is your host, Jakov, signing out.